Hey everyone, it's Emily with Wellness for Generations. I am really excited to be doing another live this week. Um, we missed a few weeks because my life was insane, but that means that more progress has been happening on the business. Um, tonight we will be talking with Antoline. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get her invited here so that we can have her pop on. Potentially. There we go. All right. I got her invited. I'm going to go ahead and share this really quick um, to all the places. How are you all doing this week? I have been busy, busy, and it's Monday. And here we'll pull Antoline on here. I think, don't forget to go sideways. One second here. Okay. So I'll go ahead and introduce her while we get things situated. I feel like every single time I have some issues some way, shape, or form. Anyhow, tonight we are chatting with Antoline. She is a registered psychotherapist in Toronto, Canada. Um, she has a master's degree in counseling psychology and has been certified in cognitive behavioral therapy. She has 15 years of building working relationships with adults and adolescents who have gone through traumatic events and she helps them overcome symptoms such as anxiety, depression, and PTSD. She has also, also has experience working with traumatic brain injuries and is a certified neuro is certified in neurorehabilitation. And she is also trained in QEEG neurofeedback in the treatment of depression and anxiety. Um, let me see here. There we go. Now I can go ahead and, now that you all know what she's about, oh, and we have some people watching. Um, welcome everybody, my name is Emily, and we are going to be interviewing Antoline. If you are watching the replay, go ahead and hashtag replay, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, Antoline. Now that you all know what she's about, oh, and we have some people watching. Hi, how are you? Hi. Good, <laughs> how are you? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> good. Um, so I already did your little intro, because I was... I'm, I always have issues with Facebook Live. We'll figure it out one day. Um, thanks for taking the time to chat with us tonight. Um, so go ahead and tell us a little bit about your story and um, how you've gotten to where you are now. Um, so, so while I, I'm an immigrant to Canada, I came with my okay. parents when I was five years old. And uh, I come from a very, um, my parents are very old school in that you know, you got to go to school, you got to become a doctor or a lawyer or something like that. And I was, I was not going to be a doctor or a lawyer. <laughs> but I was like, I was like, okay, I got to make them happy. So I was mm -hmm. thinking, okay, what do I want to be? And I really am fascinated with human behavior, mm -hmm. and uh, how the brain works. And I thought that was a good compromise. And I, it was actually in grade 11, I made the choice that I wanted to be um, a psych psychotherapist or a counselor of some sort. Right. Um, so, um, I've been on this journey ever since grade 11. Um, I've expanded my, um, my education because there's, I love the brain. I love human behavior and this is, has become my ultimate passion. Um, I can never get tired of this. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I love learning about this kind of stuff too. Yeah. So that's basically it. And now I'm, a. I have a master's in counseling psychology. I'm, uh, I work all across Toronto and Barrie, um, working with various individuals who have gone through trauma. Very cool. Um, go ahead. Did you have anything else? Sorry. Nope. That was it. Okay. I caught my other screen here. Um, so were you taught a healthy lifestyle growing up? Um, well, my parents never really... Um, was into eating junk food and although I you know as a kid I always wanted the junk food um 
<laughs> it was always home cooked meals and and uh, things like that. But I don't. I was never really exposed to it until actually like starting to grow up and getting to understand human the body and um, right health and what's really important. And as you're growing up and discovering new things, you learn about health and now actually my mm-hmm. my mother is very into the whole healthy living thing too so that's it's awesome interesting how she she uh she discovered that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's cool um and what is kind of your mission and purpose with with what you do um my mission is to help as many people i can to overcome trauma i'm it hurts me to see people suffering, whether it be through anxiety or depression um, or some form of trauma. I want to mm-hmm. fix it <laughs> and right. make them feel better. <laughs> yes. So that's 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 basically my purpose. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit more about what you do. What is a psychotherapist, and and what what type of work do you do? Um, so psychotherapists is working with individuals with mental health issues to overcome their mental health using um, psychological means instead of medical mm-hmm. means. So using coping strategies. Um, I, I work with um, helping individuals discover uh, their belief system that is stopping mm-hmm. them from um, moving forward in life. Uh, usually a trauma can cause that. So mm-hmm. we work on overcoming the tra- trauma and getting them to a better place, I guess. Yeah. Getting them to the here and now, really. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Go ahead. No, because they're, they're usually stuck. They're usually stuck mm-hmm. in the trauma, stuck in the past, is, and their, their belief about the world has changed. So mm-hmm. you've got to get them to um, accept what's happened and then and eventually overcome and move on <laughs> right right essentially that's, yeah yeah um yeah that's super exciting um so in your bio explain that you do neuro rehabilitation can you explain what that is yeah um so individuals who have gone through uh some kind of brain injury can cause changes in their behaviors their emotions um their and their cognitive functioning and mm-hmm. what um uh, what neuro rehabilitation does is is how to get them back get them back into society and be able to function in their day to day while minimizing the consequences of their um, injury. So mm-hmm. someone who has certain brain injury can have um, I don't know I can't think of anything <laughs> at this moment, <laughs> but like. Cognitive, fun- the main things that right, I always right. see is the cognitive mm-hmm. functioning, right? Like uh, they have a hard time with memory and concentration. Mm-hmm. And so how do you deal with the loss of memory, being able to develop a short-term memory? Well, in the moment they can't. So what are other strategies they can use to, um, to develop or to maintain their memory while they're developing their ability to get their memory back, I guess. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. That's very cool. Um, and then how does neurofeedback support the treatment of depression and anxiety? So our brain emits uh, microvolts of electricity, um, very small, tiny, tiny bits of electricity. And that's how they communicate. It communicates like the neural, act, neural mm-hmm. network communicates through these small volts of electricity. And what they've come up, what research has found is that there's certain brain patterns associated with depression and anxiety. And um, what we do with neurofeedback is using um, an EEG, which is an electrocephalogram. Um, mm-hmm. we, are, we are able to pick up that electrical impulses, take it through a computer, which analyzes the data and sends it back to the individual in a game format. So, what essentially what you're doing with the quantitative EEG uh, neurofeedback is you're getting information. The individual is getting information from the brain that tells them they're anxious or depressed Mm -hmm. and they're, they're making a physical attempt to change their brain pattern um, by playing a game on a, on a, on the screen of the computer. Okay. And that's basically, 
that's basically it. And by their change, so without the use of medication, they're changing brain patterns associated with depression and anxiety and overcoming depression and anxiety. That's super awesome. So yeah. that, I, just as a side note, um, one of the things that, as I've developed this whole idea of a something, anything that encompasses all of the holistic wellness, a, a therapist that doesn't, you know, jump to medications was one of my biggest things that I wanted to find. And I'm super excited because I, I think I have, um, I, well, yeah, I think you're pretty much the main one, but um, I have one other person that uses a little bit of the neurofeedback. And then I've recently found someone a little more local, but it's so rare to find that. Like, it's just not something that you think of. And so it's just super, I just, I just want to comment that it's awesome that um, there are these treat, treatments out there um, that show that, that, that are medical, but don't require the medication. Yeah. And it's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, so what does what you do, uh, or how does what you do fit into holistic wellness? Well, um, I'm all about not using the medication. And <laughs> I also, <laughs> I also believe that um, treating individuals shouldn't be a one sided mm -hmm. approach. Like, yes, you've been like, I work with a lot of people who have been in car accidents. Okay, mm -hmm. so you've been in a car accident, you have an injury. And a lot of the people that I work with also have chronic pain. So mm -hmm. they're constantly going to the doctor, they're constantly getting this pain medication, they're taking these cortisol shots or whatever nerve blockers, and they're, and they're doing only the physical uh, components mm -hmm. to, to their health. But it's not just physical. Our brain is the powerhouse of our entire body. It not only controls our body, but it controls emotions. Why wouldn't it be connected? So if it's connected, then we need to have a more rounded approach in treatment. Mm -hmm. That means we need to take care of the physical and the mental components, right? So that's, so that's what I believe in. And that's what I, right. like, that's why I'm into the holistic approach to treating individuals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And I love that. I, I definitely, we've only had a few conversations together, but I do hope to get to Canada one day and meet all of my little all of the few friends that I have up there um, because you guys are so amazing in what you're doing um, and I, I just it's just amazing and I love it um, so we have we're down to just a couple more questions um, what is one key element for someone to start moving the needle with their house one just one thing they could even just start doing today to start moving the needle in their house that's a good question. I actually had to think about this for <laughs> a little bit. Yes. Um, I, you know, the one thing that I think is to try new stuff. I mean, we, we come from, um, we come from a history or a generation or well, the generation is changing mm -hmm. in their approach to treatment, but we come from a, a society where the view mm -hmm. is, you know, one sided. Um, but the, the real truth is that, there are many different forms of treatment and be open to trying something out. I mean, mm -hmm. um, I've heard about light therapy and how mm -hmm. that can be really beneficial for physical pain. Um, there's so many things out there. So don't, don't like, don't throw it out before you right. try it. Yeah. 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 I, I definitely agree there. Um, there are so many things and that's my goal is to to get some of those different types of al alternatives exposed so people can utilize them um, what is one change that you want to see um, passed down to future generations regarding wellness um, well from a mental health perspective mm -hmm. I think um, from a mental health perspective it's important to um, we have the stereotype there's a stereotype about mental health I mean, it's slowly changing now, but I continue to see it, especially amongst uh, the individuals that come in. Like, I have a young person right now who's having a hard time, you know, accepting that there's a mental health issue uh, mm -hmm. that he's dealing with. And so the one thing I think it's important is to be open and try it out. It doesn't mean that you're mm -hmm. crazy. <laughs> right. It just means you're having, yeah, it, it just means you're having a hard time dealing with something. So mm -hmm. let's talk, let's figure it out and help you solve it. I'm not here to judge you 
uh, and criticize what, what you're going through. It's I'm mm -hmm. here to help. Right. Yeah. And just to piggyback on that a little bit, um, I think that as we can, you know, work on that ourselves and then pass that on to our kids, raise our kids differently um, to where they are able to handle their emotions and understand why they're thinking certain ways, that we can see a huge shift. And um, I definitely see some of a shift because of some new people that I've been around. Um, and it's been exciting to be with people that are so like minded. Um, but I agree that it's, it's definitely um, thoughts about mental health as a society need to change for sure. Um, so I, yeah. I like that you, that you mentioned that. Um, and then I how, just, go ahead. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to tell you like um, uh, an example of someone who's passing it down to generations. Mm -hmm. I've been working with this one individual who's been in a car accident and everything that I'm teaching her, she's teaching her kids mm -hmm. and her kids are just soaking it up. Like, just coping strategies and how to, you know, create a positive mind frame and so on and right. so forth. And now she set her kids up for success. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, there's not a lot they're going to have to work through as an adult. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as long as you, you know, it's really important to teach your kids at a young age, because when they get older, there's going to be so many, much more obstacles <laughs> right. to overcome. Yes. Yes. I definitely agree there. Um, and then how can people find you if they want to um, use your services? Um, I'm, I'm usually, I'm advertised on psychology today um, okay. as Antoline Kirichelvam and I'm a psychotherapist okay. there. Um, I'm going to start um, um, an Instagram and a Facebook page eventually. So okay. look for it, I guess. Yes. And <laughs> and I'll be starting a new position, actually, for those who are in, out in Collingwood, um, Collingwood, Ontario. I'll be doing private practice with, in an integrative medicine approach uh, okay. to treating individuals. Yeah, so totally excited at uh, uh, Georgian Bay Integrative Medicine. So okay, look me up cool. there. Yes, yes. And if you want to go ahead and send me some of those places, if they're online links, I can go ahead and... Um, uh, edit the whatever the the post here um, so that people can find you okay awesome thank you all right well thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today and um, educate us a little bit more on psychotherapy and I hope you have a great rest of your evening thank you you too <laughs> bye bye